Hi everybody. Um, spring is always a time of new growth. It's a great time to get outside, look for signs of life everywhere, the buds, the blossoms. Maybe in the evening, if you're lucky enough, you can hear all the frogs and toads. I haven't heard any this year, but usually I do. I know they're, they're out there, but for some reason they're not chirping near me or singing near me, so I haven't been able to hear them. Um, it's a great time to look at life cycles, so I would like to talk a little bit more about um, the life cycle of the frog. So this is also going to be about toads. It's a warm spring day. After the long cold winter, the trees are turning green again. The animals are busy. Many birds have returned north from their warm winter homes. Listen to their songs. Crickets chirp loudly, adding to the din. At the pond, cattails and alligator weeds grow tall. Beautiful water lilies dot the surface. As dusk falls, some of the sounds fade away. Everything might seem peaceful and calm until what are those strange noises? Those are the sounds of the frogs. A chorus of male frogs and toads has gathered at the pond tonight and each one is calling to attract a mate. Many kinds of frogs puff out their throats when they make mating calls. This part of a frog's throat is called its vocal sac. It looks like a small balloon when it fills with air. The frog is forcing air over its vocal cords, making them move back and forth very quickly. And this movement produces the frog's deep, loud croaking sounds. It's a little hard to see in this picture because it's supposed to be dark, but maybe you could see, you see the Look, thing that looks like a balloon. That's the vocal sac. You can, oh, you see it better on this one here. Look, see it there? So here are some different frogs and toads. And spring is the time of year when they're looking for a mate because frogs, like every living thing, was given that command to go and make more of your cells. Croak, croak. The female listens for this sound and then she heads for the water. She knows it's time for her to find a mate and lay her eggs. So every spring, most kinds of frogs and toads lay their eggs in the water. Now the eggs can take anywhere from three to 25 days after they're fertilized to hatch. And that depends on the kind of frog or toad that actually laid them. Now the young creatures that emerge have a very special name. Um, they're called tadpoles, or sometimes people call them pollywogs. So in here we're going to see some more frogs. Here's a lovely lily. And then we see down here, you see this big clump of eggs. We get to talk a little more about their eggs. So frogs and toads are actually closely related. Um, their young will develop into fully grown adult animals in much the same way. And we're going to take a little look at how that happens. And um, before the tadpoles hatch, the female lays thousands of eggs at one time. And the eggs are covered in a jelly-like substance. And that protects them. And the little eggs look like the tiny little black dots inside. Now frogs will lay eggs in big clumps or clusters. And that's something that's different to toads. Toads have long strips, like ribbons of eggs, and the, um, they twist around the water plants. So I'm going to show you a picture of a couple of, one's a frog and one's a toad. So we see a bullfrog and a big toad there. 
You can sometimes tell the difference between frogs and toads by their skin. The toads tend to be a little more bumpy or warty looking. And here are the eggs. So if you find eggs in the big clumps like this, we know they're from frogs. We can call that frog spawn. And here we see the ribbons of eggs and we know these came from toads. So if you're lucky enough to live near a pond or a little lake and you get to see any of these eggs, you'll be able to tell the difference. Now, out of the thousands of eggs that are laid, only a few survive. So the rest of those eggs become food for other creatures that live in or near the pond. You may have seen ducks at ponds. They're sometimes going down for the duckweed, but they'll also eat the little eggs. Uh, different kinds of birds will eat them, fish, even sometimes salamanders will come and eat them. And here's a picture of some of the creatures in the pond. You see a turtle as well. They'll come down and we see some different creatures here fish and there's a duck and a salamander. They come down and they eat the eggs. But that's why they lay so many because we know that most of them will not survive. Now after a few days the eggs will grow longer and flatter and if you were able to look at some while they're in the water you'll see them start to take these long shapes and they'll start to wiggle inside those jelly sort of clumps. Now the jellyish stuff provides protection, but also nutrition. The eggs of the tiny tree frogs, and they're called spring peepers, those cute little frogs, they hatch in about four days. But if you have a bigger frog like a leopard frog, maybe 10 to 12 days. And larger frogs, such as the Goliath frog, can take about three weeks to hatch. And here are some size differences. Here's the little spring peeper. Those are the ones that I love to hear, but I haven't heard any. Here's a leopard frog. And here's a Goliath frog. He's huge. He's so big, he's hardly in the picture. So most tadpoles um, are very small when they hatch. They're maybe about that size, about a quarter of an inch. Um, and then they'll attach to pondweed or something and just hang on there. They don't really um, have eyes and things yet. They'll stay there and they hang on to the little plants and they stay there until they get bigger. They're there for a few days. Now a tadpole has a long tail. He looks like a fish and you could be mistaken. They also have gills like a fish. And the gills allow the tadpole to get oxygen from the water. So that's really um, interesting. They have gills and I'm going to show you a picture. Here you see some little tadpoles and they're hatching. You see them coming out of the little jelly eggs. And they come and they attach onto pondweed and they grow bigger there. And here he's got his eyes and you see his big long tail. Look at his gills. Do you see the gills, those feathery things? You can't usually see the gills on a fish because they're inside their gill slits. But those little feathery things make it look like a fish and it actually it acts like a fish, doesn't it? Because it's living in the water and it's taking oxygen from the water. Now frogs and toads belong to a group of animal, animals called amphibians. And that sort of means they have two lives, if you like. One life in the water and then when they're older they have another life on the land. And most frogs and um, toads, actually all of them, will go through a change. We call it metamorphosis. Metamorphosis means they undergo a great change. Meta means great and morph is changing. So they look dramatically different to the baby um, of their species. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that. After a few days, the tadpole hatches. Um, I mean, a few days after it hatches, some of the first changes take place in its body. Its tail gets longer. That makes it easier to swim around. Uh, its mouth gets bigger and that helps it to eat. And then it's got its gills. They start to develop into internal gills. And then the little animal is able to sort of move from place to place. It doesn't just have to stay attached to the pondweed. Now, as time passes, more changes happen. The tadpole keeps growing and changing. The first thing that grows then is the hind legs, the ones in the back. 
the mouth keeps getting bigger and bigger and the tail gets shorter and shorter. So sometimes children ask me how they eat their tail. They don't eat their tail. They don't like reach around and won't eat their tail. What happens is the tail shrinks. You can take nutrition from its tail. The tail shrinks as it gets bigger, but it doesn't eat its tail or anything like that. It does get a bigger mouth. So its hind legs grow first, the tail starts to shrink, the mouth gets bigger, it starts to grow its front legs. And I'm gonna show you a little picture of that. You can see as it's changing. So here we see a tadpole, it's just the external gills. Here we see one, the gills have become internal and we see a hind leg. The tail is starting to get shorter and fatter there. We see more hind legs and this one has its hind legs and its forelegs, meaning not number four, but the front legs. And the tail is getting shorter. Look at that. This mouth is getting bigger. It goes all the way around now. So as the gills disappear, the tadpole develops lungs, and we have lungs. The growing animal will use lungs to breathe oxygen in the air. So now that it has lungs and it's able to breathe from the air, it comes out of the water. It can go on the land. And uh, within a few more days, the tail completely disappears, and the hind legs and front legs are then fully developed. The mouth is now big all the way around for eating insects and they have fully formed lungs instead of gills. Metamorphosis is complete. And it shows you here, there is a grown up frog. It has finished its metamorphosis, its great change. Now the front legs are strong and they're long and it's able to jump or hop. Um, its back legs are very powerful. It can swim easily and also powerfully, so it can jump and swim very easily. This is a, a bronze frog, it's called. Look at the length of his back legs. Look how powerful they are. Those are pretty cool. Now, toads and frogs have big eyes. They're kind of bulging. And we know by their eyes, well, we get a clue. Are they a predator species or a prey species? Hmm, that's right. If they have eyes that allow them to see in different directions, we know that's their way of being warned that something is coming behind them to catch them. So frogs are um, prey species for larger animals. They're predators for bugs and things, I guess, too. Now, a toad's legs won't be as long or as powerful or agile as a frog's. They have large eardrums to help them hear. And I'll show you one here. So it's called a tympanum. You see here? So there's the eye. So right behind the eyes, they have a tympanum, which is what helps them to hear very well. So you can't see ears sticking out like um, some animals and they have sticky tongues. I think we all know they have sticky tongues and they can stick them out very quickly. You all might have seen that dragonfly flying around. Well, look what happened to it. He caught it with his long sticky tongue. And that's how they get their dinner. So frogs spend all their lives in water sometimes, um, certain species, and those species that do that, they can't breathe under the water. They have to swim up to the top um, to breathe. Such frogs that live in the water eat fish. They also eat other tadpoles and water insects. Um, and an example of um, a frog that lives completely on land would be the large painted horned frog of South America. So I'm going to show you him. He's kind of creepy. He doesn't go in the water at all. He spends his life completely on the land. Except for when he was a baby, when he was a little tadpole, he had to be in the water. But most frogs will live near the water and swim in the water, but this guy, he doesn't like the water so much. Now, the skin of a frog is moist and smooth. Um, toads are sort of more dry and bumpy or warty. 
And no, you can't get warts from a toad. That's not real. So some frogs have poison glands in their skin. And that could uh, make a predator very sick. So it's a way of protecting themselves. And frogs and toads, their skin is very sensitive to temperature and light. Um, frog skin can often change color. It can go from like a dark, almost blackishy color to a light green. And that helps the frogs to camouflage and stay safe. They're cold blooded. Now another name for that is an, an ectothermic. Ecto meaning outside. Their body temperature is controlled by the conditions outside their body, the weather, the temperature of the water. They are not always cold. Sometimes people think cold blood, it means their blood's always cold. No, it doesn't mean that. It means it can change. The temperature of their blood is not constant. It changes based on their external conditions. So when the cold weather comes, their body temperature will drop and then the animals move more slowly. And some amphibians actually dig down into the mud and burrow and they cover themselves with some soft earth maybe. Some go down to the bottom of the pond and burrow in there and they go into a deep sleep, a type of hibernation. Now when they're doing that, they don't breathe through their lungs. They have a special adaptation Amphibians like that, like frogs and stuff that are hibernating, are able to take oxygen through their skin. If their skin stays moist, they can breathe through their skin. So if they're hibernating or in a deep sleep, they're not actually breathing with their lungs. And here's a picture of some frogs down in the mud. And they're sleeping down there. So there are many different species. We think there have been about maybe 2,700, but those, those numbers change. Um, just in North America alone, there are over 70 species. They're found all over the world except Antarctica. It's too cold there for them. And here are some pictures of some different kinds of frogs or toads. And um, it said the Fowler's toad and the American toad are two types of common toads in America. And these might be the ones that we find. I know sometimes I see little frogs or toads hopping around. So we have the regular American toad and the Fowler's toad. They're two common types in America. So you've probably come across one of those. Frogs come in many different sizes and they have interesting habits. Um, this is called, this one is the tiny spade foot and he has a special adaptation. He has sharp back legs and he likes to dig. So just like any species of animal um, or type of animal, frogs and toads also have differences and special adaptations to help them survive um, in their habitats. Now the largest frog is the Goliath frog. He's huge. His body is almost a foot long. So let's think a foot about 12 inches is about that long. And that's just his body. Now his feet, think of the hind legs, how big they are. His feet could be about two more feet in length. You can't, I can't even fit it in the camera. So his back legs would be about this long. So you could add his legs to his body and you can use your imagination. He is huge. And then there's a little grass frog. Look at this little guy. He's teeny weeny and that's his real size. So look at my fingernail and then look at him. He's barely bigger than the tip of my finger. So it says next time you're walking in the woods or near a pond, be very quiet and alert. You might see a frog or toad go hopping by. Watch it closely and listen for its call. It's fun to explore the world of amphibians 
and to observe these interesting creatures. So maybe you're lucky enough, as I said, to live near a pond or to be able to hear them at nighttime. They're so, so pretty. Um, but they're also very sensitive to pollution. So be careful, keep your water nice and clean. Don't let um, litter go down the drains or in the ponds and things like that. Um, I hope you enjoyed learning about frogs and toads and I'm going to have further lessons, so watch out for them. Bye.